All right, so I've been getting a lot of requests for hunting dog videos. Let's talk about, let's think of a random, a random uh, training tool that I use. Okay, here's one, a check cord. Uh, what a check cord is. So essentially, you have your dog, he hasn't been introduced to an e-collar yet. He doesn't, he doesn't know that yet. But you're gonna start doing some basic retrieving. And you're going to start off at small distances and, you know, get the dog to get the ball and engage him in a fun, playful way. A lot of labs and, and, and retrievers and uh, even shepherds, they don't really need to be taught how to, how to, play, how to play fetch or how to um, retrieve a ball. It's just inherently in their DNA. And they just seem to know how to do it without ever even being taught. So you've got your dog, and you, you know you're, you're doing retrieving drills. You want to have this this check cord. It's a basically it's like a leash, but it's a super long. I think it's like most of them are made out of nylon um, cord that you can send out 100, you know, 200 yards. It's you can get them in different lengths, or some of them are extremely long. And uh, I'm a firm believer in never giving a dog a command if you can't reinforce it. Um, you're not going to be like doing your recall command and saying buddy here here buddy no here buddy no here buddy buddy and start cursing come here buddy and getting all mad no you need to have a means of controlling the dog when you give a command don't give a dog a command if he's not fully taught trained and proof to the point that you have 99.9% uh, return rate on on the command given where he actually does what you, what you're doing and, and that's very advanced obedience so stop lecturing but the dogs out there and you, you you give the command one time sometimes I'll do it twice maybe he didn't hear me but that's a lot of times me being uh, you know wishful thinking the dogs have amazing hearing and I know he heard me the first time I gave him that recall command he just chose not to listen so you're gonna reel him in with that check cord and um, I'm fairly aggressive about when I reel the dogs in. If I have to, if I have to reel you in, and I, I've given you ten, like eight seconds after I did the recall command to, to respond to me, you're getting reeled in hard, and you're getting reeled in fast. And then I'm going to put you into some more commands, and then I'm going to send you back out. And if you do it again, I'm going to keep repeating the process until you learn. Um, so yeah, that's a really useful piece of equipment for for hunting dog training. And really just for any type of far recall training, you want to use the longest type line you can use. Um, and then for, and to further more advanced training, once you want to become even more proficient, then you start introducing the e-collar and you do that in a very slow, methodical way. In the beginning, first two days, you don't even give the dog any sort of e-collar uh, stimulation. You just get him used to wearing it. Um, in the beginnings, I just get the, maybe the dog to get used to a vibration. When I tell him to do something, I give him a vibration, buzz, buzz, and then I start figuring out what my dog's working level is. And and I have a video all about how to find your your dog's working level. Um, it's about e collars, so I'm not gonna go into depth about a hundred percent on how to use an e collar. You can either message me, and I can tell you different ways to use it and and the proper way that we use it. Um, and then my next hunting videos, I'm going to show you guys about uh, the different scents and how to train your dog to find pheasants, how they find ducks, um, and that gets into what I'm very familiar with from my past of, of detection work. Um, you start to integrate the smell of, they have, they have artificial scents or maybe they're real scents, I don't know where it comes from, but it smells like a duck and you put it over the, the dog's training dummy and you start teaching detection so that the dog, if he loses sight of where the bird falls after you shoot it, he's gonna start looking for what's called a scent cone. And you'll see him, you'll see him start searching back and forth, running across the field, and then once he gets into that scent cone, he's gonna follow it straight to where the bird is. And uh, that's an interesting thing to teach, so I can't wait to show you guys that. Um, if you have any questions or comments, concerns, or you have better ways to do things, by all means, I'm always learning. I don't think I know everything. Um, I'm extremely humble, and I realize that everybody has something else or a better method to, to dog training. There's a, you know, there's a saying out there, there's like a million ways to skin a cat, and I can say that because I don't really care about cats that much, but I, you know, I, still, I still pet them every once in a while. 
But uh, there's a million ways to train a dog and every piece of equipment that we have, and I call it equipment because it's a tool. This tool, this tool works on most dogs and I think that it can work on just about every dog, but there's dogs that have been traumatized with this tool because it was used improperly and you may never be able to use this tool again so you've got to find a different tool to use. Um, and that's, that's my philosophy of dog training. You've got, a, you've got a tool belt full of all these different tools. We're talking prong collars, um, um, control collars. We're talking British style slip leads. We're talking e-collars. Uh, there's The list just goes on and on. Martingale collars. Everything is a tool and you can use it as such. You know, you may, you may need to try three different um, sockets before you get the right one that fits. Just a little bit of philosophy and how I feel about about dog training and um, anytime you want to hit me up I love to discuss it it's 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 what we love all right have a good one